Let's talk about ex exponential and logarithmic functions, lesson number eight, and we're going to graph log functions. Now we're going to explore the value of b here in the function y equals log base b of x. How does the value of the base b here change the way the graph looks? So we'll investigate how changing that value affects the graph. And notice that every graph of this form must pass through the point of one zero because the log of any base b with the argument 1 is equal to 0. So here we have the graph of y equals log base 3 of x shown here. The graph passes through, of course, that 0 or 1, 0, but it also passes through 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 1 here because log base 3 of the input value 3 is going to be equal to 1. So let's complete the statement and sketch the graph here. We're going to use this window of negative 1 and 11 for x min and x max. And y min will be negative 4 and y max will be positive 4. So let's take a look at y equals log base 10 of x, or just log x. If we did that, we could take our graphing calculator and, and take a look at it. So here it is. Let's bring it over to this side. And there I can see here, I'm going to show you the window settings. I made the x minimum negative 1, the x maximum 11, the y minimum was negative 4, and the y max was 4. I'm going to now go through here and say, well, let's show you how I got this. So I'm going to press math. So here I'm press math. And when I have the math, I'm going to move down until I see log base. Once I have that, it has a little instruction here. I can cha change the base. It's 10. And then here, use the input x t theta n for the x. And there's one third. It looks like there's another one I can put in. So I'm going to press math and go to log base. It is base of 1 divided by 10. And that's using x t theta n. There we have it. And now we can graph it. There is the log x. Next will be log 1 over 3 of x. And the final one will be x, sorry, y equals log base of 1 over 10x. And there it is. OK, using that then, we can find, well, what are these points that go through this y value of 1? Well, when we take a look at it, we could actually create another line and say that's equal to 1, and then graph that, and we can find out where it intersects. But I have a better graph that I'm going to show you now. Here's the Desmos app on my iPad here, and I have y equals log of x in red. I have my y is equal to log of 1 tenth, but I had to put it in as a decimal here, as 1 tenth as a base of x. I have my y equals one line. I have this one is log with a base of one third. Now I couldn't put one third into this app, so I just made it very, very close. 0 0.33333, whole bunch, and that repeated is going to be equal to, very closely equal to one third. And then I also have y is equal to log base three of x here in purple. So let's just make this, uh, perhaps I can make it a little bit thicker for you so that you can see it. There it is. And I'm going to move now, once I have my y equaling 1, I'm going to put that in there. Maybe I'll just make this um, a black color, or uh, yes, we'll make it black. Okay, so then here we have the y equals 1. So as I show you here, this is a log base 10 of x. And where is it equal to 1? I think we can see it. It's right there. It happens at 10, 1. All right, if we get out of that and go to the 1 tenth, then we'll find out that, well, where does that equal 1? And that's at 0 0.1, or in other words, 1 tenth. If we go to this one of log of base 1 third of x, then we can find out again, where is that equal to 1? Well, that happens at 0 0.333, uh, repeating. Well, we can safely assume that that is equal to 1 third. And finally, this one here, we can find 
log base 3 of x, we saw already that that is 1 at 3. So using that information, we can see all the intersections right there, 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 and there, and we can see that. Returning to our graph then, let's graph this. So we can fill in these. It's going to pass at 10. The input value of x here is 10, so that y would equal 1. This would be 1 third, and this would be 1 tenth. And so I'm going to use blue for this y equals log 10, so maybe I'll we'll put a blue star there. And here we go. So we know it's going to be at 10, it's going to be at 1, and then it's going to come this way and come underneath here. Underneath like so, through, and there is, there is the y is equal to log base 10 of x. Let's use a different color. We'll use black here for y is equal to base one third of x here. So at one third, it's going to come from this side. And here you have this one third, it's right there. And here we're going to go through and it's going to have that intersection still at that point and go through there. Nine is going to be right there too. And oops, you can see here this is going to be a reflection of that other black line there. And then we'll use another one. Uh, maybe we'll just make this a blue one here, a blue highlighter. One tenth is going to come underneath, underneath here, come through, and it's going to have that same. Oops, it's not going to reach ten until that point right there. And so you can see this graph is is difficult to to draw here, but this is this is going to be y is equal to the log base of one tenth of x. So without a graphing calculator, we're going to sketch the graphs of the following. We're going to try y is equal to log base 5 of x. That's going to be here in the center. At 5, it's going to equal 1. So let's just review this very rough sketch of this graph of y equaling log base 5 to the x. It's going to come in between here, between log 3 and log 10 here. It's going to come through. Right here at 5 is going to be 1, and it's going to come in between this side. Now here when we take a look at y equals log base 1 over 5 of x, that's going to be right here at 1 over 5 of x. It's going to be a reflection here, and you can see it would look like this. And I'm going to make this line here again through 5, and it's going to be in between the 3 and the, sorry, the between the 1 tenth and the 1 third graph. So returning to this Desmos graph here, we can add, then we can add this y equals, y equals log base 5 of this graph here. And we can see, oh, that, yes, of course, would be this orange is in between that uh, 3 and 10. And adding another one here, y is equal to, again, that log base function. But instead of 1 over 5, we're going to put 0 0.2 here because that's the equivalent. And put x. And then we can see here, again, that 1 over y equaling log base of 1 over 5 is going to be in between this log base 10 and log base 1 third. Okay, let's take a look at completing this table then. So we have these functions here along the side and we're going to determine the characteristics of the domain, range, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, asymptote, and the x-value when y equals one, considering all of these functions. So let's take a look at the domain then. Here we can say that x is going to be any positive number. So x is greater than zero. 
Now for each of these, it looks like x is just going to be greater than 0 in all of these cases. So here we have x is greater than 0. Uh, I guess you can say that x can be any real number as long as x is greater than 0. So full set notation would be x such that x is greater than 0 and x is any real number. And x is greater than 0 in all of these cases. Here the range, well the range is can be anything. The range can be any real number whatsoever in all of these cases. Y is any real number. Well, taking a look at the x-intercept here, we're saying, well, where is the x-intercept? Well, if we look at our graph, every single one of these log functions went through this point of 1, 0. So the x-intercept for all of these, the x value is 1. So we could say it's 1, 0, but we can say the x value for the x-intercept is always 1. Here, the y-intercept, well, the y-intercept, when we talk about it, we want to look at the graph and say, is there any point where it touches the y-axis? And remember, this is a rough graph, so it's not supposed to. So here, this is no, none, none here, none here, none for any of these log graphs. Well, what about the asymptote? If it doesn't touch the y-intercept, but gets very, very close, if it gets very, very close and tends towards the y-intercept, then we can say the x equals 0, or the y-axis is the asymptote. So we can say x is equal to 0 in all of these cases. And here, let's take a look at each of these functions, and we can say the x value when y is equal to 1. So here, for the original, we saw that when the x value was 3, then the y value was 1. So the x value was 3. Well, what is the x value for this function, y equals log base 10? It's 10. For this base, it's 1 third. For this function, log base of 1 tenth, 1 tenth as the input value for x resulted in a y value of 1. And here, then we can safely assume this is b. The b, when used as input here in this function, then would result in a y value of 1. In order to answer the questions to section part D and E and F, we're going to take a look at this graph here. And I have the graph here so that you can see it. Here in red is y equals log base 10 of x. In green, we have y is equal to log base of 1 tenth of x. And we see they go both go through 0, 1, but look at this goes up, the red one goes up this way, the green one comes down. And if we move on over this way, we can see right at this point, it goes through 10, 1 here, it goes through 10, negative 1 here. And we see, look at that distance between the x-axis here. There's one, one right here, one unit, and one unit. Well, that's very interesting. Well, let's take a look at log of base one third and log base three. So again we start off we see this log base three, this perp one goes up and through the log base of one third of x goes down and around. But again take a look at perhaps this point here. Three one, three negative one, here nine two 9, negative 2, this distance is the same. If we pull it in here, I wonder if you can see, it looks like these two graphs are a ref reflection of each other. And in fact, we can probably find the mirror line here. The mirror line looks like it's going to be the x-axis. So returning to answer these questions, how do the graph of y equals log base 3 of x and log base 1 third of x compare with each other? Well, it looks like they are reflections of each other about the line, well, the line, the x-axis, right, the x-axis, or in other words, the line y equals 0. In part e, how do the graphs of y equals log base 10 of x and log base 1 tenth of x compare with each other? 
again, it is a, law, a reflection about the x-axis. Well, we know actually know, we actually know much about reflection about the x-axis. When we're talking about the reflections about the x-axis, we are talking really about taking a y value and changing it to a negative y value, the same distance from the x-axis. Let's complete the following statement. The graph of y equals log of base 1 over b of x is a reflection about the x-axis of the graph of y equals log base b of x. Well, in the transformations unit, we talked about the replacement for a reflection in the x-axis, and it's this one right here. It's y is replaced with negative y. So if you were to start with y equals log base b and make this replacement, how could we talk about the new equation? Well, we have y is equal to log base b of x. Now, if we replace this, we could say this is b, an exponential form, b to the y is equal to log, or sorry, b to the y is equal to x. If that's the case, then we go through with our replacement. y is replaced with negative y. Then we can say, and that's b, and this y is now a negative y. So then we have, let me move it up so you can see it, negative y here, and then equals x. Now we're back to the log form. We have, we could say this is log base well, before we do that, we can actually go with b negative y, which means it's b by the law of exponents, b to the negative 1, y is equal to x. And here we can say, well, that would be replaced with b to the negative 1 is 1 over b to the y is equal to x. And if we continue that, then now we can return to here and say the log with this new base let me put it over here though. It's log with the new base of this 1 over b of the x is equal to y. So then we can say then that y is equal to log base 1 over b of x after we make this replacement. So we now have two equations for the graph of y equals log base b of x reflected in the x-axis. So we could say log of the base 1 over b of x is equal to negative log b of x. Now after doing this complicated one, we could have just taken this y equals log base b to the x and replaced this y with a negative y. Negative y is equal to log base b of x, which here is y is equal to negative log b of x. But we notice that then these things are the same. And so we've shown that. Now here, let's take a look at class example number one. Read it. If log base 4 of x is equal to 8, then we're going to state the value of log base 1 over 4 of x. Well, here we're saying that log base 4 of x is equal to some y value. and Remember when we talk about the log base one log base of one fourth of x, since this one fourth is the reciprocal of four, we can say that's equal to negative log of four of x. And therefore we can say that's equal to negative eight. So now we're going to prove by converting to an exponential form. And so we could say that we have log base 4 of x equaling 8. So therefore, we can say by exponential form, we can say that 4 to the 8 is equal to x. And if we said let log base of 1 fourth of x be some unknown value v, then that means that one fourth, changing this to exponential form, one fourth to the value of v 
the exponent v is equal to x. And therefore, since both of these values equal x, this is equal to x, and this is equal to x, since both are equal to x, then they are equal to each other. So we could say 4 to the 8 is equal to 1 quarter to the v. But 1 quarter to the v can be thought of as 4 to the negative 1. That's 1 quarter to the v. And that means that 4 to the 8 is equal to 4 to the negative v. And using our property that if powers are equal, then well, if one power is equal to another power and the bases are equal, then the exponents will be equal. That means 8 is equal to negative v. And therefore, we can say v is equal to negative 8, which, remember, that v was equal to log base 1 fourth of x. So we can say log base 1 fourth of x in this particular case is equal to negative 8. Continuing our investigation of the graphs of log functions, we're going to look at the partial graphs of y equals log base 2 of x, y equals log base 4 of x, and y equals log base 8 of x. And it's shown here. We have log base 2 of x, 4 of x, and 8 of x there. And here, we're going to complete the following statements. We have y is equal to log base 2 of x. It passes through 8 something. So let's follow this line here, log base 2 of x. And when the x value is 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, that value looks like it's 3. So that's 3. And what about log 4 of x? Well, when we find 8 here, that looks like it's about here, that's 2, that's 1, actually you could say 1.5. So let's say 1.5 or 3 over 2. And y equals log base 8 of x when it passes through 8. Looks like it is a value of 1. Okay, in part b, the log... The graph of y equals log base 4 of x is a vertical stretch of the graph of y equals log base 2 of x about the x-axis. So what kind of stretch factor is it? And let's complete the statement. So here it's saying that this... Oops, I made an error here. We're not comparing the log base 8 of x. We're comparing this one to this one. So here we're looking at, it's a distance of 1.5 looks like here, 1.5, and this one is a distance of 3. Right at this point as well, we have this is a distance of 1, and this one is a distance of 2. So it looks like this y value, the y value for log base 4 of x, is always half of the y value for log base 2 of x. So here we can say it's half. Well, what about c? Here we say the c, the graph of y equals log base 8 of x is a vertical stretch of the graph of y equals log base 2 of x. Now we can see what this is. So here compared to this one, it looks like it's one unit here and three units that way. And if can we see another one, let's see. You know what that looks like? It's 1 and then 3. So it looks like we found that this is a vertical stretch by a factor of 1 one third log base 8 of x is 1 third log base 2 of x. So we'll just go through this again. I don't know if you can see this, but here log base 4 of x is 1 half log base 2 of x. Log base 8 of x is 1 third log base 2 of x. And we're going to use those results to try and find a transformation that would map the graph of y equals log base 2 of x to the graph of y equals log base 64 of x. So here we went from base 2 to 4, so 2 to the 1, 2, 2 to the 2. That was a stretch of a half. And when it went from the base of 2, 2, 2, or sorry, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 
that was a stretch by a third. And when we went from, let's see, if we go from 2, 1, 2, 2 to the 6, which is 64, and it looks like we will go a stretch by a 6, perhaps. Because it was al always compared to this one here, the actual exponent on it. So here this is going to be 1 6 log base 64 of x is going to be 1 6 of log base 2 of x. Well the above here that we found out in the investigation here um, is an example of this general rule. The transformation which maps y equals log base b of x to y equals log base b to the n of x is a vertical stretch above the x axis by a factor of 1 over n. So you notice the, exp the exponent here on this base b here, the exponent on b would help us to find the stretch factor by a factor of 1 over that exponent. So log base b of n of x is equal to 1 over n log base b of x. Let's take a look at class example number 2 and describe the transformation which would map the graph of y equals log base 3 of x to the graph of y equals log base 81 of x. So here using this rule we can say this is log base 81 which is 3 to the 4 of x and that was, would be equal to 1 over 4 times log base 3 of x. So what is the transformation here since we have this now is coefficient of one quarter we can think of it as going from a y equaling a f of x. So here this a value is equal to one quarter which tells us that it's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of one quarter. Let's take a look at part two here. We have y equals log base 16 of x and we're going to graph it or transform it to the graph of y equals log base 4 of x. So here we started with y equals log base 16 of x. So using that 16, 16 as a power of 4 is going to be 16 Actually, I shouldn't use this arrow, but this is going to be 16 to the 1 half is equal to 4. So here, using this rule, then it's going to be 1 over this exponent. So this transformation is going to happen with y equaling 1 over 1 half of log of 16 to the x. And when we, so there it is, y equals 1 over 1 half log base 16 to the x. And this 1 divided by 1 half is going to end up being 2, 2 log 16 of x. And there you have that. So we can see from this 2, a is equal to 2. We can say then it's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Well, let's complete the statements here then. Log base 81 of x is equal to 1 quarter log base 3 of x and log base 4 of x is equal to 2 times log base 16 of x.